Welcome to the Write Good Books podcast, the audio companion to writegoodbooks.com with your host, Jason Boga. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. I'm Jason, and I'm joined by our co-host, Scott Michael Childers, and it's been a week. How are you? I'm fine this week. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Excellent. I just got back from a, uh, a book signing. I signed one. <laughs> Hopefully it was yours. Yeah, it was mine. <laughs> oh, it was for a reader. <laughs> so, you know, you never know what kind of audience to expect. So it's always fun. Mm. Um, so this week, since we are recording towards the end of November, I hope some of you guys out there and, and girls out there are making good progress on NaNoWriMo. And I'm hoping at the end of the month you'll have a pretty solid first draft. So we're going to talk about first drafts, how we get there, and our different methods of writing them. Yeah, <laughs> this podcast is a first draft, this apparently. Is. <laughs> As I stutter through the dialogue. Yeah, I think maybe we kind of touched on first drafts and our methodology <laughs> in previous ones. Yeah, we talked about like discovery writing and outlining and stuff. Yeah, but. yeah, but we're going to really focus on our methods mm -hmm. because they are different. You know, Jason and I don't write the same way. And like we don't write the same material, we yeah. don't write, our methods aren't yeah, the same. Yeah, and most people probably don't. Yeah, and your methods may be different than ours, and we'd love to hear them too. Uh, share them in the comments of your of various places. If you have an interesting first draft method. If it involves yoga, I don't know if I want to hear it, but okay. <laughs> so let's get started. Which one, which one should start? Well, I'll talk a little bit. You know, though, I kind of do different types of stories differently. Okay, well. You know, if I'm writing a, a f flash fiction story, I'll do a first draft in one night, and I'll usually have it planned out how it's going to go. And so then I really will use a pretty strict outline. Okay. If I'm writing a short story of like three to 5,000 words, I might do a little more f um, discovery writing and just kind of have a character in mind and see where I end up and see what happens. Okay. For novels, I'm all over the place, and maybe we'll talk about that later. Okay. <laughs> what about you? Um, for me, no matter what type of writing I'm doing, whether it's flash fiction, novel, the 300-word newsletter article I do for, for work, it's just brain dump, mm -hmm. really. I'm just getting the ideas out of my head, onto the screen, or you know, if I happen to be using paper, which I rarely do, but from my brain, through my fingers, to the keyboard, onto the screen. And I produce a ton of words. They're not all good words. I don't expect them to be good words. I expect to be just getting the raw material on there, on the screen, and then I do heavy edits for my second draft. So my first draft is awful. It's large, it's bulky, but it is brain dump. It's like a thousand words an hour. And you try to get it out as fast as you can, just get it on paper so you can deal with it? Absolutely. I, I'm not overthinking my reactions. I'm, I'm definitely a discovery writer uh, when I go through things. So, yeah, my second draft, there's rewrites and moving stuff around and even reconfiguring characters. Sure. As I, you know, I've, as I've gone through... Later on, it's like, wow, I've really discovered the voice for this one. So I make a small note, mm -hmm. fix it in second draft, and then I do that later. But it is really just big, bulky. So do you put dump. any uh, pre-writing in or pre-planning at all? Do you at least have an idea of how you're going to end your story? It depends. depends. So there are some stories where I, I want to go on a particular journal, mm -hmm. journey. And, you know, since I do a lot, it, it, like nonfiction, of right. course, I definitely, I'm not making things up as I go along, heavily researched and that type of thing. But when I'm doing historical fiction, I have beats I know I have to follow mm -hmm. because of the sequence of real life events. Okay. So I know I have to hit certain certain things at certain times to take advantage okay. of those. Are the, so you might discovery right to that point. To that point. And then to the next point. And when I'm doing, you know, other things like, genre fiction, sci-fi, fantasy, I'm just along for the ride. Okay, that's cool. That's fun. That's how I used to, I, I used to only write that way because okay. I thought if I know what's going to happen, I'm going to get bored writing it. Yeah. Now, now I'm, I'm more of an outliner now, but I, I mentioned flash fiction. So with, with flash fiction, 
on theme of absence, I always view the ending as the, mm. the most important part of flash fiction. You know, it's a thousand words or less, so I'll, I won't start flash fiction unless I know how it's going to end, and then I'll yeah. just write to that end and throw that twist or that punch out. Short stories, I'll, I'll look more at a character or a setting, and then I'll kind of maybe discover, right, maybe outline, but I'll come up with something on that setting. But, but we're not really talking about story building. We're talking about first drafts. Mm -hmm. So I guess I, I can't do a thousand words an hour on the first draft, but that's really, I think, a good goal to shoot for is really just get it out there and well, don't self-edit. See, and that's my problem. I still will put too much thought into it because I'm lazy well, and I don't want to do it later. <laughs> I don't know if that... <laughs> and, and that's the thing. It kind of depends on where your brain is. If you have a brain or... A, <laughs> if you have a brain, I sorry. paused at the really wrong time. <laughs> if you have a brain that's geared towards always nitpicking mm -hmm. at stuff and you haven't trained it to do otherwise, then just brain dumping is not going to work for you because mm -hmm. you're always going to be thinking about the 500 words you wrote earlier the, in the day and you're going to get clogged up and stop. Right. And so if you're one of those that needs a little bit of forethought as you go into it a little bit more, I can see where if you're naturally, and there are lots of writers who, who, who are very specific in their word choice, mm -hmm. even in the first draft. Right. And so they naturally write at a slower pace because they're more, they're thinking about it more at, in that time. Whereas me, word choice comes later after I've established characters and voices yeah. and stuff like that. So you might not have a problem using simpler oh, yeah. simpler language or maybe even what I'll do sometimes yeah. is I'll just put like parentheses around something and say you know write this out later but here's oh, yeah. what happens and that's a good method for dra first drafts. Yeah my word choice mm -hmm. changes between revisions I, and that's where I become after I've done that first draft mm -hmm. of whatever I'm doing I sure. know I know what voice I want to use mm -hmm. in narration and characters. And then that informs my revision process yeah. and, and changing the words. You know, I, I discovered, wrote my first novel on NaNoWriMo, and yeah, you really, you learn your character, you get to know your character as you write it, and yeah. then you can... If you're discovery writing, yeah, yeah definitely. To go back to NaNoWriMo, I mean, that's what it's for, you just get those words out. And yeah. You, got, you have to train yourself to do that, and not self-edit, not overthink things, just... Yeah. Get it out there. Yeah. Now, some of our listeners, they may be world builders. Mm -hmm. And so they do, like you were talking about pre-work and stuff, mm -hmm. ton of pre-work. They already know the characters. They know their voices. Mm -hmm. They know the scenes. They have vivid pictures of the scenes in their heads. Right. They're not going to use my method. Yeah. You know, they're not going to write like I write, where I, I discover that through the writing process. <laughs> They've discovered it already in their pre-work. What you do with a brain dump into a story in your first draft, some people might do that into an outline. Absolutely. And that's I've been leaning that way in my later years. <laughs> yeah. But, but there's some people who their basic story building, they structure, mm -hmm. right? And I there are some things where I'll snowflake or snowball. Mm -hmm. so simple outline, boom, and then I add words. Yeah. And then there's other times where it's like, it's a lump of clay and I take out. Oh, sure. So it just kind of depends. I write until I feel the story's done. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about words, word count. I'll fill or edit Yeah, later. that's that's a good point. If you're if you're discovery writing a short story, you don't necessarily need to say, this flash fiction, this is not flash fiction, this is a novella. Yeah, and so, yeah you might let the story end where, it, where the story wants to end. Yeah, yeah. And... and you know, I'm not saying I'm the only way, heaven forbid, because I, I have to invest a lot of work in that mm -hmm. second draft. It's twice as much work yeah, in it second is. draft than first draft. Yeah, I have, I have one novel, I, I Discovery wrote the whole thing, and once a year I pull it out and try to clean it up, and I just can't, and it goes back in the file till next year. But it's interesting how, you know, now the other, well, one of my current work in progress all I'm doing is planning and outlining and character profiles and setting descriptions. Then I sit down to write it. I write, I think I wrote, you know, 800 words or whatever. And I read those words and say, oh my lord, this sucks. It doesn't matter how much pre-planning I did. This is bad prose. So I'm still doing a first draft, even though I had all this stuff planned out oh, beforehand. Yeah. And it's... 
Well, you don't know how to edit something until you've written it the yeah, first time. Yeah, until it's done. So, yeah, regardless of how prepared you are, you're still writing a first draft. Yeah, I mean, you listen to us talk. Some of this, these <laughs> ideas sound good in our head, and then we actually say them. And, yeah. Oh, I'm just kidding. It's fun, though. You know, everybody does take a different approach. Like Stephen King in his book, he's never outlined, never pre-planned, just write do a thousand words a day until it's done and clean it up later. Mm. Of course, he pays people to clean it up for him later so he can say that. Oh, that'd be nice. But, yeah, but then, then I know other people who will pull out the hero's journey and word for word plug in that plot before oh, they write a single word. Yeah, and here's the thing. If you end up with flash fiction or short story or book or whatever, who am I to say that your method is right or wrong? Really, right. it, you know... It, it it's one of those things there are many paths to get there mm -hmm. and you get there some take longer than others some don't but the that, one the one benefit is you know when you do get that first draft done you have something to work on you can stop well someday i'm gonna finish a book <laughs> yeah yeah you've got that first draft done and, and nobody has to see it yeah so it can be as bad as you want it can be <laughs> as full of you know, don't write out scenes. You can summarize things or whatever. Just, yeah, get it done and type the end. Draft number one complete. Yeah. Well, and, and there are some times when we talked about writer's block mm -hmm. in the past, right? So depending on your first draft style, you may never have writer's block if you just are the type to come in and just plow through because mm -hmm. you know I'll fix it, I'll fix it later. Yeah. Um, that's, that's one big way to beat writer's block is to, you know, stop caring let go and let God, as the kids say. Um, the kids say that? The kid, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't I know think you need to do some kids. research I, on that one. <laughs> I have too many kids to know anything about kids. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you just got to get get it out there. Yeah. Or, you know, mm -hmm. let's say you are stuck on your first draft. Mm -hmm. Go work on another project to come back to it the next day. Yeah. That, that's acceptable, too. But mm -hmm. really, um, I'm trying to think of what some other authors have said their first draft process is yeah there, there's some that it, it's a massive amount of world building yeah. and the first draft process is very they're outlined they're structured you know, I, I i remember brandon sanderson saying that he does so much pre-planning that you know a lot of the editing is done with the first draft so he doesn't have as much revision yeah. at the end so you know or it might be the opposite where you have no planning, then you have tons and tons of cleanup. It's, yeah. And it's got to be what works for you and what makes your product as good as it can be. Yeah. How much time you want to invest in that second phase, I think. Yeah. And for me, I, I much prefer the editing. You know, I've had some things where I've cut half of what mm -hmm. I've written and then restructured the other half. Yeah. Um, cleanup is so hard. Well, <laughs> maybe in part. Maybe. <laughs> And that's another thing. We all write differently. We all revise differently. Yeah. So so what do you think? Have we hit the well, end? Uh, <laughs> real quick, what do you use for software? Uh, I think we've mentioned this you before. I, I, I use Scrivener. You do use Scrivener, too. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, me too. I well, use, sometimes. But I have been known to write bits and pieces in my cell phone mm -hmm. and then copy and paste yeah. if, I, if I know I'm going to be waiting in an office for a while. Or You know what's awesome with Scrivener? You can... Whatever method of first draft, of writing your first draft works for you, you can use Scrivener because if you discover write, you can make character notes as needed throughout your writing with Scrivener, or you can do it all beforehand. Yeah. It's nice to have those notes all in one place. Yeah. I don't know if there's better software or not. I'm sure there's other software. Well, yeah. well there, there's some, I get, uh, just to, to briefly touch on, there's some that, that blanks out the entire screen. Mm -hmm. And it's just you and a blank. Oh, yeah. I can't remember the names. I, I will probably link to come up with something yeah, later and add it. Mm -hmm. Add it in the second draft of the podcast. <laughs> um, but, yeah, there's some there distraction-free writing. Mm -hmm. Look that up. So And it's geared more for the writing, not the organization of, of your writing. Then there's others that are strictly outline tools. There's, there's people who use Word in outline mm -hmm. mode. And they oh, just yeah. build from that. And yeah. they build up this really crazy chapter outline mm -hmm. and then at the end they reformat it all into a regular looking document yeah i've tried that i i kind of took a word document put here's chapter one here's what's gonna happen and yeah, i just yeah. kept expanding from there and i don't know it's it didn't work for me but 
Well, I, I bet works you, for. <laughs> yeah, I bet you there's someone out there who who swears by it, and yeah. I'm glad they found that tool because if that works for it for you, great. So. So I think that'll do it for this week. Yeah, I think we've hit our word count for the okay. day. Okay, so if you'd like to support us, you can check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash writegoodbooks, and you can visit us on the web at writegoodbooks.com slash podcast. And thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. We'll see you with a second draft. 